Sure. Go ahead. Um, Natalie, just real quick, you know, I've had a lot of people talk and ask me about no one's keeping track of the natural immunity. People that have gotten the disease and gotten over never got vaccinated. And I know that's a, it's an almost an impossible number to trace, but certainly there's got to be a rough estimation. If we're at 67 percent and let's say 20 percent are naturally immune to it, doesn't that help our herd immunity? Do you have any comments on that? Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead. I, unfortunately, I do not. I don't have any of those numbers. I could certainly um, ask our partners um, at the local and state level to see if there's anything out there that may may have some information around that. Well, if I can continue, Madam Chair, yeah. the question or the concern I'm having is people are asking me all the time, since I've already had it, I don't need the shot. And I don't really know how to respond to that. Can you give me some advice? Uh, Madam Chair, I, Dr. Cole, I could I could comment if you yes, don't Dr. mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, um, natural immunity COVID recovered is a uh, much broader immunity, much more durable, long lasting. Uh, this virus is almost 80% similar to SARS-CoV-1. We know those individuals 18 years later that have been tracked still have immunity. This should be a third category within our society and our counties that uh, acknowledge that that's the best immunity of all by far over a vaccine immunity. And to your point, Elt, a high percentage of our individuals in our in our county have had COVID. And giving a shot to an individual, if you look at the studies of Dr. Rao, Dr. Kammerer, Dr. Methudius, and their three other studies, vaccinating a COVID recovered individual puts them at a higher risk of adverse reactions than baseline. Um, so the COVID recovered, giving them a shot can actually um, adversely affect those individuals. There's no good science or data to indicate that a COVID recovered individual needs to be vaccinated from a medical point of view. Thank so you. So if Amy. I can continue, Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead. Dr. Cole, what are the symptoms of somebody that does get vaccinated after having the virus. I mean, what does it actually do to them if they've already got an immunity? Oh, some of them will get um, severe reactions. You can get fever, obviously, just your basic uh, shot reactions. But some individuals will end up uh, with. You, you can get something in immunology called high zone threshold, where you already have an antibody, and which is good. And antibodies aren't the be all end all. Your T cell memory is far more important than your antibodies over time. But if you get a shot, you already have antibodies, you can actually ramp your antibodies too high and you can get some immunologic dysregulation. Um, the other individuals, I mean, there, there's smaller subsets where people will actually get, you know, similar uh, myocarditis. Some other individuals will get neurologic conditions. Um, and you're modifying a broad natural immunity and selecting for a spike immunity, um, which can be less broad than your, your natural COVID recovered response. So you can actually favor a narrower uh, focus of immunity as well over time. Um, so again, in the COVID recovered, there's, there's no medical evidence that a COVID recovered individual needs to be boosted unless you know, they're a high risk individual who perhaps has a weakened immune uh, state. Um, if there were breakthrough cases in the COVID recovered, we would see medical reporting by the thousands of, of breakthrough cases. That simply does not exist in the medical literature because it's simply not happening. And if you look at the commentaries of the most published uh, author, the medical author on COVID, Dr. Peter McCullough, um, he has over 46 publications on COVID this last year and a half. Uh, he says you cannot look into all the medical literature and find a case where the virus has been sequenced twice in a breakthrough case in a COVID recovered individual. So a broad natural immunity, we need to be acknowledging that. We need to be not pushing vaccine campaigns for those who've had COVID and, and recovered. And another very important aspect is if somebody is recently convalescing from COVID or getting a shot and they don't know whether they're either brewing COVID in their body at this time and or have recently had COVID, um, those individuals, uh, we, we really need to have a screen before vaccine um, program because those individuals are put into that risk category of severe reactions um, during that window in which they have COVID and get a shot and or if they've recently recovered from COVID and get a shot. 
So Dr. Cole, this is Betty Ann. Um, if those people are screened that are considering getting vaccination to see if they have the antibodies, is that being pushed as a program? What do we do? I, I mean, I don't know that it's being pushed as a program. I think it's a very medically uh, prudent approach to take. I know Dr. Uh, Nordchasm out of uh, University of Pennsylvania or at least he's in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, he's pushed that very, and, and he's very pro-vaccine, but he's pushed that very heavily. And he talks about basically the clotting reactions that can happen in those who have the COVID, have COVID at the time they get a shot and or those who uh, convalesced and really aren't far out of the window of having had COVID when they get a shot. He's documented in an increased risk of uh, vascular injury in those individuals. So I think it would be prudent to have a program that if you know one chooses to get a shot, it would be medically prudent to make sure that you know we're screening so they they don't fall into that higher risk of adverse reaction category. So, Madam Chair, this is a quick question, uh, Dr. Cole. Is that just your standard COVID test, or is that a different test? It's a different test. You're looking at a blood test for antibodies um, for one, and if one thinks they've had COVID and recovered. And antibodies always wane over time. They go to a quiet level. Doesn't mean you don't have immune memory. Your antibodies drop with any infection in the human body over time. Um, there's also a, a T cell test. You can look for uh, T cell memory and the genes that have been turned on in your T cell line of, of immune cells as well. So there's two different blood tests that can be done to assess those individuals. So my question again, Madam Chair, to Natalie is, these people that we have that have passed away in the hospital, have they been tested for this kind of a reaction? They came in, they got a shot and it made them sicker and they ended up in the hospital. Do you understand my question? Natalie, are you still there? I am still there. Yes, sorry. Um, I do and I, I cannot answer that. I, well, I, honestly, I keep hearing about, well, I had, I think I had it back in March or I had it back last year and I think I'm okay because I already had it, but you didn't get tested. So you don't really know if you even had coronavirus, you might have had the flu or you might have had food poison or something else. And, and that's where I think we're losing the, the connect with people is that uh, I've already been through this. I've already had, it, I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm okay. Well, you ne really need to go in and get an antibody test. It sounds like to make sure that it was coronavirus in the first place. So that might be something we need to look at as a board down the road. That if we want people to get vaccinated, they're going to have to get this test first. I don't know. You know, I'm just thinking um, long term. I think that would that would pay off. Oh, I can't make up my mind. Madam Chair. Yes, Russ. So I just wanted to weigh in. Like everything, COVID seems to be. There's, you know, the, the recommendation is for people who have recovered from COVID who are unvaccinated to get vaccinated. So I can have um, one of our staff speak to that in December and, and share the research on that. I know Dr. Cole cited some uh, studies appropriately that would suggest there's potential or maybe high potential for harm that can occur from that. But uh, I would just share the that the current recommendation is people who are COVID recovered, once they've recovered from the illness, that they get vaccinated. Can I comment to that, please, um, Madam Chair? Yes, please, please do. Uh, in the history of virology and immunology, we, we generally don't, don't do this to people who are recovered from viral diseases. Um, when Once a patient is recovered, we don't, if a kid has had chicken, we don't give a chicken vaccine. If someone's had measles, we don't give a measles vaccine. Um, this, the, it really, um, unfortunately, counters science and basic virology to be um, vaccinating people that are uh, from illnesses. So, uh, again, if we're happening, if we were having breakthrough cases in the COVID recovered, we would see it replete within the medical literature, and it is literally absent. Uh, because it's not happening um, from a, any statistical significant point of view. Uh, we're seeing, um, you know, the vaccines now um, don't prevent acquisition nor transmission. And we know studies out of University of Wisconsin just recently show that the vaccinated are carrying equal or higher viral loads 
of uh, virus now because these vaccines were for the uh, legacy variants that aren't even circulating anymore and don't or Delta as well. Um, they were formulated for the wild type strain Wuhan um, from uh, many variants ago. So those, those who have had COVID uh, have a broad natural immunity that form uh, antibodies against all proteins in the virus. So to vaccinate someone Again, it just doesn't make scientific sense. And I, I like Elt's idea. I mean, if we're going to be using resources wisely um, to be vaccinating those who who have had COVID, it, it just doesn't scientifically make sense whatsoever. So, Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead. So, now. Russ, I would like to yeah, get that on the agenda for the Decembers and let's have a really hard discussion with some help here to kind of explain everything to us to make sure we're going the right direction. Glad to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Madam Cole. Chair, Madam Chair, this Thank is you. Raul. Yes, Raul. Go ahead. And and I think uh, it's important to know what else said, and I think right, uh, Dr. Cole would agree with this, and that people need to know. Just saying that you had COVID is is not by itself sufficient. I think there should be some sort of test to determine whether you had it or not, and that would be um, that would be helpful to prevent. Um, the misuse of the vaccines, but I, I think Dr. Cole would agree that just somebody saying not, I, I've had COVID without any proof of it, uh, is probably not the safest route uh, for that person to go to make a medical decision for themselves. I concur. Thank you. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, this is Betty Ann Lindsay and uh, Natalie. I want to thank you for addressing the Air Force population. Since that uh, is approximately one third of our county's population, and so our numbers are, should be significantly better than as reflected in our data. So, thank you.